Hi guys, my name's Kent. I'm an English and IELTS teacher with over 12 years of experience and I currently teach here in Vancouver, Canada. Hi guys, I'm Juan, also known as JP. I'm an ESL and IELTS instructor with over 20 years of teaching experience and I also teach here in Vancouver, Canada. My partner Kent and I help people develop their English skills on our social media channels called Englishing Over and our website EnglishingOver.com. Today we're going to explain what the IELTS exam is, who it's for, and what you need to know before studying for the test. There are two types of IELTS tests, general and academic, so it is very important for you to know which test you're required before applying for it. General IELTS exams are usually taken by candidates that are interested in applying for certain jobs or migration, for example, permanent residency or citizenship. Academic IELTS exams are often required for higher education, like college or university, and jobs where you're required to have a high proficiency in English. This test is more demanding than the general IELTS exam, so make sure you know which test you need to before you book your exam. The main differences between these two tests are in the writing section and the reading section. You will have 40 minutes for the listening section, 60 minutes for the reading section, 60 minutes for the writing section, and anywhere between 11 to 14 minutes for the speaking section. For the reading, writing, and listening sections, you will have a set schedule, and they will be taken one after the other. The speaking section is more flexible, and it can be given a day before or a day after the other sections, or on the same day. For academic test takers, the reading test has three long academic reading sections which are generally appropriate for people entering university. This test is 60 minutes long. For general test takers, the reading test often includes extracts of texts that people will encounter in everyday life in an English-speaking environment. If you are taking the paper test, write the answers straight on the answer sheet. You will not have time to transfer them later like you do in the listening test. The listening test has four sections, and the sections get harder as you go through them. This means that the first section is the easiest, and the fourth section is the hardest. The total test length is 40 minutes. You write your answers on a question booklet first, and then at the end of the test, you have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, unless you're doing an online test. If you are taking the IELTS academic section, the writing task one section will be some type of academic writing activity, such as a line chart, a bar chart, a pie chart, a table, a map, or a process. If you are taking the IELTS general exam, the writing section one will be some type of letter, either formal or informal. The writing task two is the same for academic in general. You will need to write an essay which answers one to two questions, Generally, these essays ask you to write about bigger discussion topics in everyday life. Topics, for example, could be, are video games good for children? Do people in certain professions not get paid enough? And a lot of other topics in which you are required to create a longer answer. The speaking test usually lasts for around 14 minutes and is divided into three sections. Section 1 begins with personal questions about work, home, and other everyday topics such as travel, reading, what life, fashion, and many others. Section 2 requires the test taker to speak continuously for around 2 minutes. Section 3 has the hardest questions which are often more abstract and ask more academic style questions about society, education, life, the future, and many more. The reading test can be a challenging section of the IELTS exam, but the good news is that overall students don't usually have a big problem with this section. Why? Because the more you do it, the faster you get at doing all the readings in the one hour that you're given to complete the exam. And the other thing is you also learn better how to identify and find answers in reading text. 
which speeds up the overall process and generally improves your overall reading score. Similar to the reading section, the listening section is another area of the test where candidates find themselves generally improving their overall scores. This is simply because they become more comfortable listening to long sections of English speech and at the same time learning the style of questions that are going to be on the listening test and learning how to identify answers more quickly. The speaking section of the IELTS exam is one of those sections which might be a little bit more difficult for some test takers. If you haven't been speaking English for a long time or regularly, having things like a natural fluency or good pronunciation may be a bit of a challenge. In addition to this, having a wide range and variety of vocabulary and grammar which is used correctly are also things which might not be known to the test taker and having a good IELTS teacher or simply knowing more about the marking criteria of the speaking section will help you to improve your overall score. The writing section is likely the hardest section of the IELTS exam. This is because similar to the speaking section, a good variety of grammar and vocabulary are required. And in addition to those two categories, there are two more categories. One of them is cohesion and coherence, which you can think about as having logical ideas that are well organized. And the other section is the task achievement and task response. And you can think of those areas as how well did you answer the questions which you were given in your writing section. So again, the more you understand about the test, and particularly for writing, looking at some good examples of model IELTS writing and talking to an IELTS teacher who can give you some advice on where your weaknesses are will go a long way to help you improve your writing. And finally, to wrap up the tips section, I think the two biggest mistakes that students make before taking the IELTS test are number one, not knowing anything about it, uh, not understanding the question types that they're going to see in the reading and listening, not getting enough practice. And the other thing is not really understanding the scoring criteria, especially for the writing and speaking sections. These two things, I think, contribute to a lot of students uh, retaking the test and spending all that extra money when they could have just prepared a little bit better in the beginning and gone on to the test with more confidence and probably getting a better overall score in the end. And you'll see a lot of candidates end up taking the test again because they didn't get the score that they wanted on the first time. The IELTS test can cost upwards of $300, so a little bit of preparation in the beginning is a good idea. Getting some help with your particular weaknesses is also a good idea just so you don't have to retake that test in the future. One thing which I would recommend any IELTS test taker to look at before taking their first IELTS exam would be to go online and search the IELTS speaking band descriptors or the IELTS writing band descriptors. These are public forms from IELTS and they are available to anyone online and they will give you a clear idea of how your writing and how your speaking are evaluated by an official IELTS examiner. This is an incredibly useful resource which is totally free, publicly available, and it will give you a much better understanding of how you are being evaluated and know what you need to do to reach that higher level. If you want to learn about IELTS or tutoring, check out EnglishNilver.com. If you want to learn English through fun English videos, check out English Hangover on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook.